You know them. In fact, maybe you're one of them. One of the millions of people in this country who have everything. Everything that is but a god. The Lutheran Ambassador, the radio voice of the Association of Free Lutheran Congregations and the Free Lutheran Church in your area. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And today the Holy Spirit, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, seeks to set men and women free. And when the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. dry and hungry land. There is great need to hear the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Many people are expressing their need to hear the gospel. They want the word of God preached to them in its truth and in its power, purely and simply. This is the ministry of the Association of Free Lutheran Congregations, moving into many new areas now, beginning new fellowships of Christians, meeting together week by week to hear God's Word. If you'd like to know more about the Association of Free Lutheran Congregations, we invite you to write to us at 3110 East Medicine Lake Boulevard, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The new zip code is 55441. Or contact the Free Lutheran Churches in your area. At the close of this broadcast, you'll be hearing the names and addresses of the churches in your area. Our speaker today on the Lutheran Ambassador, Pastor Herbert Franz. He speaks to us today on the subject, having everything but God. In Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 17, 
And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and he went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Now we have in our text for today a young man who had everything which the world holds dear, and yet he was not happy. What did this young man possess which so many people seek after today, hoping that these things would satisfy the nameless longing in their soul? Young person listening to me today, learn from the voice of experience. Don't ever expect that things will satisfy your longing soul when things did not satisfy this young man. This young man, first of all, was rich. Mark says he had great possessions. Luke, in telling the same story, says he was very rich, probably the richest young man in his day. I wonder how many people have said if I had a million dollars, I would be happy. Then why is it that some people with much money take their lives? Why is it that those who live only to make money are never completely satisfied? They are always seeking for more and more and more. Listen to what Jesus said. Life does not consist in the abundance of things which a man possesses. Life is not possessions. Didn't Jesus also say through the Apostle John, he who has the Son has life. He didn't say he who is wealthy has life, but he who has Jesus Christ has life. This young man had possessions and still he wasn't happy or he wasn't really living for, he said, what am I lacking in my life, Jesus? But then this man was young. We read in Matthew 19, 20, he was a very young man. He had a full life ahead of him if Jesus should allow him to live. Some young, some young people don't call youth an asset. Now let me say this to you, young people. Youth should be the happiest days of your life. How many people wish they could turn back the clock of time and go back to the old swimming hole and jump in the hay and chase the cows to be back in school and to be playing basketball and hearing the thrill of the crowd and the cry of victory? Why do youth get tangled up in drugs and in sex and then many take their lives because they are not happy, they are not satisfied? This man wasn't happy in spite of his youth. Something was missing in his life. He said to Jesus, I am young, but I am not happy. What do I lack yet? What is missing in my life? Thirdly, he had good position even as a youth. We read in Luke 18:8 8, that he was a certain ruler. Now being a ruler gave him much recognition. When he went by, people noticed him. Now, we all want to be noticed. We all want to be recognized, don't we? We want people to recognize in our, 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 our accomplishments at school or at church or in the community. Now, this is a basic drive in man. We strive to be a star in the field of athletics when we are young. We want to be somebody in the eyes of people. However, let me say this to you, young person today. 
We can be president of the class. We can be star on the football team or on the basketball team and still have no complete satisfaction. For we can be praised today, but forgotten tomorrow. Now this young man had position. He was recognized by the crowd as he went by, but he still was not happy. He said to Jesus, what is missing in my life? Well, this young man was an unusual young person, for he even thought about eternity, the life beyond. Now, how many teenagers think there is life after this life? Well, here was a young man who did. He asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life, never-ending life? He believed that there was continued living after one physically dies, that the grave does not terminate life. Now, a man may have everything in life worth having, but if his interests begin and end with this world, he lives only a little above the animals. I say interest in the life beyond the grave distinguishes and exalts man above all of other of God's creatures. Now this young man was so interested in life to come that he came running to Jesus. But interest in spiritual truths or in, in future things is not enough. Our interest must lead to action. We must act upon our interests in order to benefit from them. The young man said, what lack I yet? His interests in future life did not make him happy. He was still restless. Then this young man had a rare quality which is lacking in many youth, and that is reverence for God. He bowed his knee to Jesus and even called Jesus good master. Now, reverence and respect for God and his house of worship is sorely lacking today. Now, it stands to reason that if we have respect for God, we will also have respect for those who have the rule over us, such as parents, teachers, superiors, policemen, and elders. The psalmist lets us know what the Lord expects from us when we come into his presence. We read in Psalm 89, 7, The Lord is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. We should never enter the presence of God in a careless, indifferent, flippant manner but we should come into his presence with a sense of awe. We should realize that God is not only a God of love, but he is also a holy God. He is an all-seeing God, an all-knowing God, and he observes our conduct in church. Now, reverence for God and respect for those in authority is more than an admirable characteristic it is a sign of good bringing up. It is a barometer of intelligence. Yet, this young man's reverence for God did not bring him into contact with the living God in a personal way. Reverence was something that the young man learned and not experienced in his heart. And this is where reverence begins. It is not something that we are told to do, but it is something that we experience in our heart when we come to know God in a very personal way. Now, in spite of his outward reverence for God, this young man said, I'm not happy. What is lacking in my life? Then this youth was also a good, clean living fellow. He would not be found on the street corner smoking pot or drinking hard liquor or thinking impure thoughts as the girls walked by. Jesus asked him 
about his conduct toward his neighbors, and he could say, I have kept these commandments the best way I know how, and my Bible tells me that Jesus did not rebuke him. Now, it's wonderful to meet young people who are clean in conduct, who exercise good manners, who speak purely, for we have far too many of the opposite kind. Now, Christ knew that this young man had made a good try at life, and Christ loved him. And yet, in spite of all he tried to put into practice in life, he was not happy. Something was missing. He said, what am I missing? What is lacking in my life, Jesus? Now, I would say that this young man was a, 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 a one in a million. Now, what would you answer such a young man if he would come to you and he should ask you, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, someone would say, why, if anyone gets into heaven, it certainly will be you. Or another would say, son, you don't have a thing to worry about. And if a church board was around, they'd say, this is the young fellow we want in our church. But this young man wasn't happy. For he said to Jesus, Lord, I am lacking something in my life. Now, can it be that a person can have all of these fine qualities, can endeavor to keep the Ten Commandments, can go to church each Sunday, Endeavor to practice Christian principles and still not be happy and still not get into heaven when he dies. Yes, he can have all of these things as the ruler had and still die and go out into a lost eternity. Life, never ending life, friend, is not found in my doing or practicing, but it is found in Jesus done or doing. Jesus says, it is finished. You will never be happy until Jesus comes into your heart. Life is in Christ. Those who have not Christ at the center of their religion are doomed whether they go to church every Sunday and whether they keep the Ten Commandments and whether they are clean living people. This young man had a nameless longing. This young man could not put the finger on what was lacking in his life. He knew he wasn't happy. Now by the standards which the world judges happiness, he should have been extremely happy. But he was longing and he was yearning for something more in life. There was a hunger and a thirst for something more. However, the presence of this longing was only another evidence the Holy Spirit was at work in his heart. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, the preacher's best friend. This precious Holy Spirit, which brings peace and joy of salvation to the heart, also creates restlessness and it disturbs the conscience, and it leads the seeking soul to repentance. Now let me ask you today, are you dissatisfied with your life? Well, then you praise God for this dissatisfaction. The Holy Spirit desires to lead you into a personal, living experience of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I thank God for the Holy Spirit's work in my own life, creating dissatisfaction with the life I was leading because this Holy Spirit made me so restless until one day I repented and turned my life over to Jesus. But then this man also had a wrong conception of salvation. <clears throat> but this is true of mankind in general. What good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? Note, he said, I do, I do. But as I said before, friend, it is not our doing, but his doing. This young man tried to do good to keep all of God's commandments as best he could, but there was no happiness. Now, all of the re religious cults formed in the last 200 years 
and all man-made religions of the world are based upon the belief that the sinner can be saved provided he attains enough goodness. And all of these man-made religions show the sinner striving and struggling and sacrificing and suffering and working and trying in their own strength to reach up to God. What usually happens when the unconverted man is convicted something is lacking in his life? Before turning to Christ, he will try in his own efforts to attain happiness and salvation by going to church, reading his Bible, giving to the church, putting away some bad habits, hoping beyond hope. This will stifle the longing of the heart for eternal life. But Christianity teaches that none are good. No, not even one. There is none righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We all have been shapen in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us. The wages of sin is death. Everyone born into this world has been born dead in trespasses and sin. All of our seemingly good works in the church are stinky, smelly, filthy rags if we hold them up to God as a basis for salvation. Christ must do the saving, he and he alone. Salvation is found in no other person, no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except in the name of our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to seek and to save. Who? The person who knows he is lost in his sins. While we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When we have nothing to offer him, nothing to pay, then he forgives. But as long as you are offering him some good work, or something in your life that you feel is so good, he cannot forgive. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, a tired, timid old lady approached the first desk she saw in an insurance office in Minneapolis, Minnesota. When asked what she wanted, she showed them a policy and explained that she was unable to make additional payments. She said that it was hard for her to get work and what little she did get was scarcely enough to clothe, feed her, and even keep a roof over her head. After a quick investigation, the clerk saw that the policy was very valuable, and he warned the elderly lady that she was making an unwise move to stop payment. Besides, did not her husband have anything to say? It was his policy made out to her benefit, her husband. Well, she quickly explained that he had been dead for three years. Company officials soon discovered that she was telling the truth and refunded the overpaid premiums. She, was, she also received the full amount for which her husband was insured, and the money kept her in comfort the rest of her days. She had not realized that she was entitled to the face value of the policy as soon as her husband died. Listen, the greatest benefits of all time became due when Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, but thousands of men and women continue trying to make payments on their soul's salvation while all they need to do is to accept the immeasurable gift that is theirs through death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Are you still making payments on your salvation? Salvation is a gift from God without money, and without price. And that is why there are so many people in the church today who, when they come to die, have no assurance. Why? Because they have not received salvation as a free gift. They're still working on it, and they feel they haven't worked enough. How did Christ try to help the ruler? By preaching the law. Now, what is the purpose of the law? Can you keep the law and I keep the law? None of us can keep the law. Paul said it is a schoolmaster to drive us to Christ. The law was given already after sin had been in the world. The law was given to reveal sin, 
to show us that we are sinners by nature, that we want to live independent from God. We have our false gods, and this is what Jesus said to the young man. First of all, he preached with the law dealing with, with uh, our friends. Have you kept the law? Do you commit adultery and all that? No, I don't do that. But Jesus knew he had already broken the first commandment when he said to him, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. His God in his life was money. This was his God. That is why he did not have happiness. Oh, friend, what is the God in your life? We are all religious beings and we all worship something. Friend, why don't you turn your life over to Jesus? Why don't you let Jesus do the same, saving? Why don't you come to him as a guilty lost sinner and ask him to forgive you and to come into your life? Well, this young man knelt at Jesus' feet. We don't know how long he knelt there, but he made his decision. He said nothing. And by saying nothing, you are still lost. Yes, friend, it is possible for a man to come to Jesus, to look in Jesus' face, to hear his voice, and yet go away from him. And some of you are going to do that today. You have a lack in your life. You have no peace with God. You have no assurance that Christ is your Savior. You're going to leave the service the same way you came in, not happy, just sorrowing. But where did this rich ruler go? Back to his possessions. But did they satisfy him now? They never satisfied him before. Back to his friends. Did his friends ever make him happy? No. He went back home sorrowing. And this is the way every person goes when he leaves church on Sunday without having Jesus in his heart. Oh, friend, today, salvation is a gift. You can be sure of eternity. Be sure of Jesus Christ by simply opening up your heart to him and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me come into my heart and save me. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray your special blessing now upon the word that we have shared today. We pray, God, that there will be many that will come to the cross and there deposit their sin burden and allow Christ to save them. We ask this in the Savior's name and for his sake. Amen. You've been listening to the Lutheran Ambassador. Our speaker today, Pastor Herbert Franz, Speaking of the subject, having everything but God. Stay tuned at the close of this broadcast for a word of announcement from the Free Lutheran Churches in your area. And join us next week for another broadcast of the Lutheran Ambassador.